Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm Ukrainian Canadian. Today is February 23rd, 2024. And let's get to the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So, fantastic news. Yet again, the Russians have lost another A50. That is two in one month. And last month, if you guys remember, the, the Russians lost an A50 in the Azov Sea close to Mariupol. And now, today, the exact same plane was lost a little bit further away in Krasnodar, so this is in Russia, meaning that the Russians, based on the last incident, decided to fly this plane a little bit further away from the Ukraine front line, but that didn't help them. And again, I need to remind my viewers that, uh, based on this picture that you're seeing here, um, the closest, basically, Ukraine-held territory to Krasnodar, where the, the plane was flying, is about 220 kilometers. So the Ukrainians have the resources, the means uh, necessary to shoot down these planes very, very far away. So it'd be interesting to uh, to learn in the future how this operation was conducted by the Ukrainians. Um, and the reason why we can confirm that this was a Ukrainian operation that, went, that was successful and not a Russian-friendly fire incident is because this picture was shared by the Ukrainian Directorate of Intelligence, which basically confirms that they knew that this plane was in Krasnodar and that they um, managed to pull off this operation by shooting it down, but we don't know exactly how they did it. This is a picture of the wreckage site, uh, so this is a total loss, and the crew is also completely dead. Uh, so this is basically two planes that the Russians have lost, similar planes that they've lost in the last month, and they're very, very expensive. They're $350 million a piece, and it's not like Russia can easily replace that and easily replace the crew because you need a very, very well-trained um, crew to be able to operate uh, this plane, which takes about, I believe, a dozen to 15 people to operate. And this is not just some random schmucks that you, you know, that you can train in a few days. This takes a very long time. So a massive embarrassment yet again for Russia. And there's also some pro-Russian channels that were mentioning that a second plane was also present and was shut down by the Ukrainians, but it's unconfirmed. So for now, we can confirm with certainty that the A-50 was certainly destroyed. Um, so basically, this means that the Russians have absolutely no capacity to defend these very expensive planes, but I'm not expecting them to stop flying them. If there's one thing that I've learned from the Russians, that they will continue uh, doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. Example, Chornobaevka. If you guys remember in Kherson, the Russians held this airport close to Kherson city for months. And even though they were getting hit constantly on a daily basis by Ukrainian artillery, they still were doing the exact same thing, moving their ammunition, moving their tanks, uh, moving helicopters at the airport, despite the fact that they knew that the Ukrainians were dialed in on their positions and they would be shelling them on a daily basis. So here I am expecting no different and the Russians will continue flying them until they run out of the A-50s. So they have about, I believe, seven to eight of them remaining. But it's also a question of the crew. Can they replace the crew uh, quickly enough? We'll see. But an excellent operation and a huge embarrassment for Russia, which will make them much more blind as well in detecting Ukrainian airplanes and missiles, right? And the F-16s are coming very soon. So uh, by losing more and more of these A-50s, Russia is in, really, in a really bad situation right now, uh, which will allow the Ukrainians to perhaps easily much target the Kerch Bridge much more easily um, because the Russians simply, you know, perhaps in a few months will lose uh, all of their A-50s. Who knows, right? At this rate per month, right? Russia will run out by the end of the, the summer. So fantastic news and, uh, you know, great operation by the Ukraine Air Force and uh, Director of, Directorate of Intelligence. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is Zelensky's interview with Fox News today, which was very important because it gave us a really great contrast compared to Putin's interview with Tucker Carlson. And the contrast is, if you guys have seen the video and the interview, uh, first of all, the environment, right? Putin's interview was in lavish hallways of the Kremlin, isolated. You had Putin sitting in a very extravagant, lavish room somewhere in the Kremlin, whereas Zelensky was giving this interview in the front line in Kupiansk in some um, half-destroyed military warehouse, uh, very grim sight, and it just really represents what the Ukrainians are fighting for, right? And Putin, you know, is all about isolating himself. He's paranoid. He's afraid. 
whereas Zelensky isn't afraid. So this is a very stark contrast between two leaders. Uh, one is fascist and one is all about freedom. So some of the main points that were discussed in this interview. So this was a summary, as you can see here, of uh, what Zelensky mentioned. First of all, he talked about Tucker Carlson's interview with Putin being BS that spread misinformation about Ukraine, the war, and the U.S. relationship. That's evident. The president, so Zelensky, also wants Trump to visit Ukraine and the front lines to witness the extent of the war and potentially change his stance. Zelensky also urged the U.S. Congress to approve further aid for Ukraine, highlighting that the delays in inaction will cost Ukrainian lives. We've already talked about this uh, multiple times, right, that uh, mostly the GOP does not want to pass this because now it's become a very political issue because it's the election year and they just want to make Biden look bad, right? Uh, which sucks because this is at the cost of Ukrainian lives. If they, um, you know, the longer this bill doesn't get approved, this military assistance worth $60 billion to Ukraine. Also, Zelensky asserted that the Ukraine losses are far fewer than those incurred by Russia, seeing that Ukraine's losses are five times less than those of the Russians. So this is the first time actually I've seen Zelensky talk about Ukrainian losses in public um, or giving a certain number. So that gives us a certain idea of how, how many losses the Ukrainians have had uh, since the war started. So that's a ratio of one, um, one to five, which is, you know, obviously any type of loss for Ukraine sucks, but it is realistic in my opinion. Of course, the Ukrainians are also losing some of its soldiers, but also civilians every single day. Um, and you guys can calculate it based on, you know, 400,000 plus on the Russian side, according to Ukrainian uh, sources. So Ukraine's about, you know, 75 to 80,000 at this point, uh, which is a realistic number, unfortunately as we're passing now to more the two-year mark of the war with Russia, or the full-scale invasion, I should say, because this war has been ongoing for 10 years, not two years. He was also asked whether Ukraine would agree to a scenario where 80% of Ukraine would be NATO and 20% would be occupied by Russia. And Zelensky mentioned that there has been never such proposals, and second, no agreements with Russia are possible because it violates them, as was the case with the Minsk agreements. And I'll get to that in my next slide for another um, piece of news that I want to cover, but I agree with him. I've already reiterated that multiple times in my videos that the Minsk agreements are the greatest example of how Russia can doesn't hold itself accountable to the tr peace treaties that it signs. Um, it's simply going to um, to manipulate and lie to get what it needs, and it will do the exact opposite that it you know that it says it's it's going to do. They're going to do so. Uh, I agree fully with what Zelensky mentions here. He also reaffirmed that Ukraine is currently relying on its domestic gas supply. He also uh, sees hesitancy and fear among world powers in confronting Putin and pushing for a change in Russian leadership. Um, and Zelensky suggests as well that the war will conclude when the world actively decides to stop Putin and address his threats. And he also hinted at new surprises for Russia in the Black Sea. So overall, great interview, and I think... Uh, for those unconvinced uh, Americans that, you know, s seem to not be sure if they want to continue supporting Ukraine, I hope that this convinced them um, to really give more support to the Ukrainian people. One thing I want to mention <clears throat> before I move on is that I really like how Zelensky responded to the question that was given to him about when will the war end, as if this is on the Ukrainians to decide. And I like his response in saying it's not fair to ask the Ukrainians this type of question because the Ukrainians right now are fighting for their very existence. This is an existential war for Ukraine. We know what's going to happen if Ukraine loses and Russia completely takes over uh, Ukraine. Massive repressions, gulags, and genocide of the Ukrainian people. And it's up to the Russians, not to the Ukrainians, to stop this, to end this war. And the question needs to be, uh, towards the Russians and not to, towards the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians will continue fighting, I have no doubt about it, because they know the consequences um, in stopping and believing again and trusting the Russians, which nobody should at this point. We've already seen the full spectrum of what Russia is capable of doing. Which brings me to the, another, the other piece of news, which is Armenia. And if you guys don't remember, for many years uh, already, Armenia has been... some a partner of Russia 
and they were part of this uh, CSTO, so the Collective Security Treaty Organization. So this was Russia's equivalent of NATO. Um, and, you know, Armenia was betting on this organization to help them um, protect their territory from Azerbaijan. And you guys, if some of you might remember, uh, last year, uh, Azerbaijan has launched an offensive in this area, this region called Nahar Nahorno Karabakh, uh, which Azerbaijan claims to be theirs. And so Armenia was betting on Russian peacekeeping troops to stop this. And they did absolutely nothing, and they just completely pulled out, and uh, that was pretty much it. So Armenia, seeing what happened, what happened, essentially suspended today its membership uh, because of that situation, and uh, because Russia did not fulfill its security obligations towards Armenia. So obviously, this is the consequence. So Russia is losing another partner in the region, and it's another reason, as Zelensky mentioned, that we can't trust Russia. Right, any alliance or treaty that is signed with Russia has less value than toilet paper at this point. And the CSTO is a complete failure. It's just Russia's way of, you know, pulling the strings and controlling the regions that it wants to control, especially the ex-Soviet republics, uh, countries. Because as we know, most of the countries that are part of this organization are from um, the Soviet Union. So Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Belarus, Armenia was at this point uh, no longer. So it was just uh, Russia's way to control, um, you know, these ex-Soviet countries. And again, Russia will only extract what it needs and leave their partners hanging. That's how they operate. Last piece of news I want to, uh, to talk about is uh, following Navalny's death, uh, Biden announced a massive um, sanction package on Russia following the death of Navalny. So there's going to be 500 sanctions on uh, Russian entities and also individuals um, and also there's going to be a lot of sanctions on several foreign companies that are currently helping Russia uh, circumvent the sanctions by procuring the goods and pieces and components and everything that Russia needs to continue with its war effort in Ukraine so although I I believe this is very important this is not what was um, what Ukraine needs right now right and this is not what's going to stop Russia obviously it's not the sanctions. It's a slap, uh, you know, on the wrist for Russia. What is really going to help? And again, I've reiterated that multiple times. But the Biden administration needs to understand they need to be far more, uh, you know, the red line that they were talking about um, a few years ago. That Biden said, you know, if you kill Navalny, this will cross a red line. Really, are sanctions a red line for you? Like, uh, you know, is that the consequence for Russia? Just sanctions? What needs? or needs to be done is sending missiles to Ukraine. The Atacams, uh, the 300 plus kilometer range Atacams right now to Ukraine, hundreds of them, that will send a strong message to Russia. You pull off stuff like this, you kill your opposition, your dissident, your, uh, you know, your journalists and people that oppose you, we're going to send more weapons to Ukraine. And that's how Russia understands consequences. It doesn't understand consequences through small sanctions they're, they have many tricks up their bag, and Russia can find ways around it. That's why they've been able to continue this war, despite the thousands of sanctions that have been imposed on them. It makes their life complicated, yes, but that's not going to solve this war, or stop this war, I should say. Send more HIMARS, send more GLSDBs, ammo, 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 weapons, weapons, weapons. This is how Ukraine is going to be able to destroy the Russian regime. So that is the response that needs to be done and I hope you guys enjoy my video. I hope you enjoy the updates. Let me know about any of the topics I covered today. A huge thank you for your support. Tomorrow, I will be making a live stream. So please tune in at 4.30 p.m. Uh, it's the two-year mark. Unfortunately, this war is still ongoing and it will be ongoing for many more years, I believe. So we're going to be talking about what's, you know, how the last year has been ongoing for Ukraine and also what things we need to look forward for. So... Thank you for your support yet again. Please subscribe to my channel, like my video if you enjoy my content, and I will see you guys in the next one. Slava Ukraini!